we are live on the Frugal Crafters YouTube channel. I'm here. I'm here. Obviously, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, along with Sarah. Hi. And we are going to paint some fall leaves today. Um, you can use whatever watercolors you have. I am using the uh, Shinhan watercolors. They're very inexpensive. And I do have a review coming up tomorrow on them if you want to have more information about them. But um, they're just, a, I've had a few requests to review them and they are uh, just an incredible um, value. They're just very inexpensive and they, they work really well. Uh, if you have questions as we go along today, type the word question in all caps and either the moderators will help you. We have several lovely friends hanging out in the chat that are at the ready to help you with any of your questions. If it's something that they can't answer, Sarah will send it over to me and I will answer your question um, live on air. If you type the word question in caps, it's just easier for us to catch it when it goes by because sometimes the chat can go by pretty fast. And if we miss it, we apologize and uh, you can you can uh, pop it back in there, obviously. Usually somebody will catch it though because <laughs> we have uh, we have a good, good crew. We do. We are going to paint some fall leaves and we're going to start just by sketching with with, um, a regular pencil and I did link up a reference photo below if you want to check that out um, the leaf shapes are pretty basic so you don't need to um, you don't need to like have a pattern but if you felt like you needed a pattern I didn't prepare one because I knew we were gonna sketch it but if you wanted one you could always just trace the photo um, I'm gonna start off with my leaf in the center because there's seven so if I know I do my one in the middle then I can I can space them out pretty easily I'm just going to start by making a almond shape. Okay, and then we'll have a little stem poking up above the line. I'm going to do a fatter one next door here. I think that's showing up all right. And I like to make the stems kind of have a little bit of movement. So have them nice, have some curves in there. It just helps them look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to put one over here. And you can have like an almost like a little S curve in there. Don't worry, you can erase any lines that you don't need. Just just try not to draw too dark. You don't want to dent the paper. That's usually when you keep, you'll have trouble erasing is when you dent the paper. Think of this, the um, the center vein in your leaves is kind of like the spine, somebody's spine, and that's what's going to give you that movement because these are very uh, kind of plain shapes, so you want to get that movement in there if you can. I'll do one over here. I'm going to put the stem in first. And these, I want these to appear to be kind of fluttering in the breeze. So by having that line in the center, it does help that. This is a almost cartoony effect that we're gonna get because we're gonna, well, you don't have to, but I'm gonna use some uh, black pen to outline at the end, any any lines I want to make more prominent. So it does give you a little bit of like a, of a cartoony effect, um, but I think it actually works really well in this. And I get a lot of questions about the mechanical pencil I use. Honestly, I just will use any kind. This is like, um, a Bic, you know, it's nothing fancy or expensive. I also like the Pilot ones, the, the reusable ones, but you can refill these. You don't have to throw them away, even though they're plastic. We were just having a very in-depth conversation yeah. about recycling. Yeah. Well, that's why I use, I when I use pencils, I use the mechanical ones, because you can just buy a pack of the lead. Yeah. And set, I mean, because you have to buy a wooden pencil and it gets to a certain length and then... You can't use it. You can't use it. And the nice thing too is a lot of them, the mechanical pencils will sell the erasers. You can yes. Which yep. is nice too. Because you always run out of eraser before you run out of pencil. Absolutely. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger and longer to kind of balance up the side. Sometimes it's fun just to jump right in there with a the pencil too and not have to worry about... Uh, Sharpening it. Yeah exactly sharpening or transferring or anything. So for an eraser, I like to use a vinyl eraser. Um, any of them are fine. I actually, this one right here is a, is a Maped eraser and it will take a regular little like rectangular vinyl eraser. So I thought that was kind of neat because you can kind of keep the eraser clean when you're using it. And I like the vinyl ones. I mean, you obviously don't need a plastic case, but you can refill these. So I think that's, I think that's all right. Just kind of realizing how in how like 
how much waste you can have in the craft room and I'm just yeah. trying to cut eliminate, down. cut down, yeah. Yeah. Now that our town is no longer recycling, it's kind of like, oh my gosh. Really makes you think about how much you consume if you can't recycle it then. Yeah, no, it does. I mean it's you know, even just like if you think about going to the grocery store, it's just everything Americans, you know, we demand that everything be packaged individually yep. and sealed and, you know, it's just like, it even just kills me going to the grocery store sometimes mm -hmm. and just like, ah, like, ah, yeah, so I much packaging. I know. I remember like buying strawberries as a kid or my mother buying strawberries and they'd be on little paper, like a little, um, right. Cardboard yep. court like container, and then it turned into like this like green cell like a thin green plastic yeah. thing, and now it's like a fully seeable Sturdy, on all sides yeah. plastic thing. It's yeah, it is kind of crazy. So we're gonna just wet eat, wet a leaf. We're gonna drop in some color, and then we're gonna we're gonna skip a leaf. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get in some color here. Now the edges of the leaves are serrated, so um, I'm gonna wet with a big brush, and I'm gonna paint with a smaller brush. So that was a 12, and this is a number eight, and they're all from the value pack. I'm gonna use um, the quinacridone red. And when I get close to an edge, what I'm going to do is I am going to just use the tip of my brush just to give it those little um, ridges. And just let it kind of float in. I'm going to grab some Bordeaux, which is kind of like a maroon color. Add that right on the edges. Think, uh, think of uh, just kind of loose painting, letting your paint flow. A little bit of yellow in there. You can use whatever yellow you like best. This is a warm yellow, permanent yellow deep. You could use a gamboge. I probably wouldn't use a lemon on this one just because we've got more reds, but if you prefer lemon, go ahead and use lemon. Uh, Mageshwari Maramuthu, I apologize if I butchered that pronunciation, is 140 GSM worth using for watercolor. I have a paper pad and I don't know what to do with it. 140 pound is, um, 140 GSM would be uh would be like about 75 pound i think so if you mean 140 pound then absolutely that's usually what i use i rarely will will splash out for a 300 pound paper um but if it's like if it is 140 pound gsm and it's so that would be about 75 pound that might that will require stretching especially if you're painting anything bigger than like a greeting card or a bookmark but that's not very common so i think you might be might mean um 140 pound but i would say if you have it it's bought and paid for let's stretch it or do the trick where we wet the back of the paper and we slap it down into a board and then we just and we wet the front and we paint wet into wet landscapes or something and that will uh, that'll work fine for that technique because you'll even out the temp the tension of your paper. I'm just gonna tip this and let those colors flow a little bit. Deposit what's on my brush. It's a nice vivid color. Sorry about the glare on that. We're gonna skip over to this one and we're going to wet the leaf. I'm gonna use my bigger brush for that. Oops, I got some eraser crumbs in there. I don't want that on my painting. This is fun, a uh, fun way to, you could even swatch your colors. You could like draw a bunch of leaves and you could swatch your colors that way. See how they mix and blend. It's a great way to get to know your colors without, a, you know, doing a really in-depth project. I'm going to use some vermilion, which is a warm red. I'd love to see how it disperses. I'm gonna put some up here. I'm gonna grab some of that yellow that we used as well, that permanent yellow deep. 
when you have um, a composition where pretty much everything is the same shape, you want to build some interest by having variety, and a good way to do variety would be color. And that's what we're doing today. So we've got repetition, which is a great, um, which is a great thing to have in a design. But if everything is just repetitive, it's not very interesting. So you need, um, you need some variety. So you, so this is repetition and variety. a little bit of that red that we had used too, just a few little spots. We'll skip to this one here and wet it. We're going to go in with our yellow, same yellow. And we're going to use some opera, which is this crazy pink color. It's a fugitive color, so um, I usually don't use it on its own because if it fades out, then there'll be nothing. But if you have some other colors with it, it'll just kind of temper it a little bit. So just keep, keep that in mind that this color is fugitive and it will fade in sunlight. So if that if you don't want to use this, uh, use a different red or orange or something that's a little bit more uh, trustworthy. Gives a nice peach color when it mixes in with the yellow though. And I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna put some some sap green in there. But I'm not gonna put the sap green on the pink. I'm gonna put that kind of away from the pink so I don't end up with too much mud. A little bit of brown is fine, but I don't want it to be all really dark. more yellow over here on top of the pink. While this is all wet, we can do some scraping with our credit card scrapers too. Now that we've got a few of those done, we have to do it before they dry out. But if you do it too quickly, then you're going to end up with white scrapes because you just kind of squeegee the paint around. And these lines are not able to be removed, so just keep that in mind. So if you're not sure if you want to do this or not, then uh, you might not want to because you can't, you can't reverse it because you're scribing the paper. This guy down here is going to be a darker green. And we'll take our sap green that we already used and mix it with some either phthalo blue or peacock blue, depending on what you have. This peacock blue is kind of fun, so I'm using that. Actually, I'll put some of that in on its own. Now, if you're going, um, like this one here is going next to um, another leaf and it's really dark. So I'm actually gonna kind of paint those little serrated edges kind of into the other leaf so it doesn't have a hard smooth area there.
Do you have any questions as we're going along? Uh, looks like we're caught up for the moment. 314 watching. Oh, nice. That's a good crowd. Seems like it's been hard to break the 300. Well, I think summertime is a little... That's true, yeah. Vacation, you know, people are on vacation, and theoretically they're not on the internet as much. Mm. Of course, with the hot, humid weather we've had this summer, I think it's driven a lot of people inside. Yeah, or to the beach. Yeah. Uh, T.S. Lindsay, do you find bee paper to be very thirsty? I bought a pack and found that the color sinks in right away, resulting in harsh lines and no going back to fix anything. Well, I don't think it's as, as sized as other papers. Like, it definitely doesn't have as much sizing as Arches. Um, but I find that it, like, it holds... It does hold the water, but I feel like it, like I don't have to keep re-wetting it. I feel like it holds the water and it stays pretty, um, pretty constant. But if you're used to cellulose paper, it might fee it would probably feel a little bit more, a little more thirsty. I am going in here. Sometimes what I'll do with that paper is I will, um, I will wet it and then I'll go mix up my color and then I'll come back and wet it again so that I know that I've got a nice even um, amount of water. That helps with uh, with cotton paper, especially if you've you live in a warm climate or you have indoor heating on, like it's winter and you've got dry air anyway, and you've got the heat on that can help. I'm just absorbing up a few puddles because I don't want to have blooms there. Uh, Patricia Kinney, how do you know the amount of water to add to the paper? I use too much or not enough. That is, um, it's practice, but I'd probably also recommend you sticking with one brand of paper until you've determined what works because um, all, every paper is a little different. So you might get used to what one paper is like, and then you try another one and then it's like, whoa, I have way too much water. I don't have enough. So that would be my advice. Um, now I'm wetting the background and I just want you to be careful not to touch any of the leaves you've already painted because they will just whoosh right out into your background. And the reason we're doing this is we're gonna play with some brush show. You don't have to do this. You could spatter your background or you could sip a cup of tea while you're waiting for your leaves to dry. It's completely up to you. But I've been working with brush show for a couple of years and I haven't really been that thrilled with anything I've done with it yet. And I thought, you know, I just really wanna, I wanna play with it some more. So that's what we're gonna do today. And brush show is a powdered pigment. Um, so it's like, it's like, it's almost like if you tie dye, you know how you get those, those powders, those little bottles of powder that you, that you, you know, disperse in water and then you soak your clothes in. It's the same idea. In fact, I think that you could probably use like an inexpensive tie dye kit, um, in place of brush which can be a little pricier. Uh, and if you have any questions on that, obviously ask that too, since we're doing that in this, in this, uh, in this project. So by wetting the paper, it's going to help lock down the brush show. Now brush show, I'm going to show you here. It's these little pots of color and I got a few colors. I purchased a few when I first became aware of them a couple of years ago. And then um, a few came in a smart art box, which was nice because they were none of the colors I already had. And the thing I noticed was that the colors that came in the smart art box seemed to be mixtures of colors. And the ones that I bought, I bought like a rose red, turquoise and yellow, those seem to be less diverse. So um, I really like these these colors here because it seems like there's a bunch of different colors, like there's yellows and blues and a bunch of different colors together. And the black has a lot of different colors mixed together. So I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit. So when you get this, there's this little pull tab on the side. So it's very tempting to just rip that and pull the top <gasps> off and you'll be cleaning brush out, out of everything in your house for the rest of your life if you do that. So stick a thumbtack in the top and then you can make a little hole that you can shake some out of. Don't worry if some gets on your leaves because we, we are gonna be doing some to our leaves as well. And then after you sprinkle it on the damp paper, I recommend doing a little spritzing because um, then you can make it move a little bit more. I find just sprinkling it on the, on the damp paper or the wet paper doesn't quite do the trick. Just be careful not to hit your leaves or they're gonna flow out into the background as well. Unless that's the, what you're looking for. That's right. Uh, Bev Roberts, 
Have you tried Blick Premier watercolor paper? I'm interested in how it compares to Arches. I have not, actually. Um, I've been meaning to try their watercolor blocks, their cotton watercolor blocks, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I want to make a little frame, so I'm just going to try to pull some, of the, some color out to the edge. If anybody else has tried the Blick paper and wants to chime in in the chat or in the replay in the comments, that would be really helpful. Um, I'm trying to think. The Blick was a little bit cheaper than the Arches, I believe. So if it's a, if it's the same quality, that would be really that would be really nice to know. Uh, Antonia Payen, have you tried the Cheap Joe's paper Kilimanjaro? I haven't. Um, I know their paints are made by Da Vinci. Their paper might be made from another well-known paper house, but I have not used it. Uh, Terry Schmidt, can you recommend a quill brush? You know, I'm actually going to go on the lookout for uh, a vegan version. I know Jerry's Artorama has, um, I can't remember the name of it, has a line that's got a vegan quill brush in it. I have a Winsor & Newton one that I've had forever that is actual squirrel, and it's lovely. I mean, it performs well, but I don't like to recommend um, animal fur brushes if there is something comparable. So I could tell you the Winsor & Newton makes a beautiful one. They're expensive. And um, I am going on the lookout for a vegan one, so I will um, review it, or at least use it, and uh, and tell you guys about it when it comes. But um, but other than that, I really don't have a recommendation. Princeton Neptune probably makes one, but the more I've been using the Mimics, the less I'm liking the Neptunes because they're so they seem so floppy uh, in comparison. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of like wetting as close to the leaves as I can without touching them. Um, if I do touch them and pulls a little color out, that's fine because this is a very loose style that we're doing. But I just want to make sure I don't end up with a with a weird hard edge, like because I can kind of see the color uh, has seeped in all the way to the edge of my wash that I made. So I'm just bringing it in a little bit with the. So I'm wetting just right up to the leaf, but trying not to touch them. Uh, Huggy12, where did you find the eraser holder? Um, Mayped, I did a review on a bunch of their um, stationary, like back to school supplies, and you can find them on Amazon and probably in any of your big box, like office supply stores, um, probably even like a Walmart or a Target. I don't know specifically because I. I rarely go into stores, it seems like. Um, I know, it's awful. I went, no, I'm the same way. I went back to, took the kids back to school shopping yesterday, and man, I mean, we were thorough. They got tons of stuff, but boy, oh boy, I'm just like, can I do this on Amazon? <laughs> can I just click a few buttons and just come to my house in two days? I'm the same way. I have to be in the mood to go into a store to go shopping for stuff. I mean, aside from groceries, but. Right, especially clothes, and it's just like, and we we ate lunch first, and I'm like, you know what? I need, I don't buy clothes very often, and it's like, I really need another top, and I really could use a pair of decent pants, and um, and so I did end up getting a top and a pair of pants, but I'm like, I went after lunch, so I'm like, I know, I just had a big lunch, it's a huge salad, and some fries, and so it's like, I know my stomach is expanded, oh, if it yeah. fits now, it's gonna fit. And as ladies, certain times of the month, you can <laughs> easily put on five pounds. Oh, yes. Because it happens. And then you definitely don't want to go pants shopping then. Because you could be a no. whole size different oh, depending yeah. on the brand and the cut and the style. And I'm going to try to be better about washing clothes, especially now that the girls are more, more into fashion and stuff. Because I shrink stuff so bad in, in laundry. So I'm just going to try to... Do you, do you have a drying rack? See, that's the thing. I throw everything in the dryer, so that's what I'm going to do. I do have a dryer yeah. rack. I'm going to use that. I think I'm going to... I use I use that for stuff, for certain things that I know. I'm like, mm, they're going to shrink. Yeah. Or they're going to fade, you know? Cause... Yeah. There. So this is kind of what the brush show is known for, this kind of like bursty... Um, uh, pattern you if you don't like it then don't do it but it's kind of fun to play with I certainly have not mastered it um, I tend to go overboard but um, it's it's kind of fun I also want to splash in some of the colors that I've already used uh, Becca Hans have you ever used Canson heritage paper oh I haven't but I did buy a pad of it um, because of the big box store locally had a 50% off uh, all artist pads a couple months ago. I haven't opened it yet, but I did buy it. So I will be reviewing that once I get
get a couple paintings done on it and I can evaluate it. I'm adding some of that peacock blue to the edge so I can have a nice, uh, nice little frame. Sometimes for seasonal art, I won't frame something, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll like put, um, like a clip, I'll hang up a clipboard or a string with, um, clothespins, just like a piece of jute with some clothespins on it and I'll clip up a few paintings. And so if you have a nice little like border on it, you can do that. And you know, if you're not going to have it out forever, you're just going to have it out for a couple of weeks while it's seasonal, it shouldn't be damaged by the, by the environment too badly, unless a kid flings a piece of spaghetti or something and it hits it. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember a piece of ham got stuck on one of my paintings once. <laughs> Like, why did that happen? How did that happen? Oh, somebody flung a piece of ham. <laughs> but again, <laughs> why was ham being flung? No, they were little. Oh, okay. So, um, Patricia Kinney, can you use alcohol ink versus brusho? Um, alcohol ink would absorb into your paper. It would be a different effect. Um, it would probably be a lot darker on watercolor paper than what you expect because it's so, um, it, it just seeps right in and it's so dark on an, on like a not on a marker if it's not on marker paper I would probably choose uh, for a substitute for brush -o, I would just buy an inexpensive tie-dye kit they go on sale for like I think like AC Moore has them five I can hey can you see that tie-dye kit in front of you Sarah I can show them that it's on the those are like I think they're like five or oh yeah they go on sale especially ac more all the time yeah yeah cheap. i got that at ac more and and then if they're not on sale i think they're still like 20 bucks but you can always use a 50 percent off coupon yeah well i think this one is actually only 6.99 regular price and then they go oh. on sale like two for ten Even or three better. for ten so something like that would be a great way to experiment you could see if you like it or not you could mix some of the pigments together so you could get that um multi-toned look and yeah, i think that'd be a nice way to experiment with it see if you like it I, it's sometimes you'll find you'll hit a spot and look oh this is great and then you turn your back and then it changes and it's like oh that's not what I thought it was gonna look like but it's fun to experiment with and it's fun to play with okay so I'm just gonna tip this around let it flow a little bit and then we're gonna go and paint those other leaves that are in between if you want to lighten anything up, just grab a paper towel. The brush -o does, um, it does stain your paper a little bit more than a regular watercolor. So you're not going to lift it completely back, but you can certainly lighten it up. Um, I, I've heard that the brush -os are light fast, but it seems like it would be very difficult for them to be light fast because they do seem like a dye. Um, so take it for, you know, with a grain of salt. Okay. Now we're going to fill in our flowers here and I'm just going to use that same number eight to wet and to paint because we've got a little bit smaller space here. Uh, Becca Hans, can you use 50% alcohol for a wet into wet? Um, I, I suppose you could, I probably wouldn't recommend it cause I think it might break down the sizing a little bit. I say, wouldn't that break? Yeah, it would weaken the paper at the yeah, very least. I think so, so if you tried to like do some scrubbing or yeah. glazing it would yeah I'll use like I'll drop in alcohol like on top of a wash like if I was doing an undersea picture because it makes really great bubbles hard edge bubbles but it's very it's it does seem to affect the paper a little bit I wouldn't I wouldn't do it somewhere where I'd have to paint over it just because it's it just reacts a little differently and leaves your paint just a little bit different of a texture um so i probably wouldn't add that if you want to add something to keep your paint your paper wetter longer use a little glycerin in your clean rinse water and that will help all right so i used opera i'm going to use the uh, quin red i'm not going to paint the stem just because i noticed it was really wet in there i'm going to go around this leaf i'm just going to make sure that i keep those little edges that I painted that I don't just um, just paint right over it and I'm just gonna be careful as I bring the paint down to the tip if some does get into the background I'm not gonna fret about it and you could also do your background after you've gotten all the leaves painted if you're worried about stuff moving but we're gonna be doing some outlining in black so it's not gonna be a big deal if you've got some some paint moving around on you 
just going to grab a smaller brush and grab a little of that Bordeaux color because I want to add a little bit um, kind of under this leaf. So it's like making a shadow onto that leaf in behind. Well, I think I'll drop a little bit of yellow in there too. Get that paint off my brush. Might as well be on my paper. It's fun to play with all these colors. Now I do notice like if you have a, a bleed, um, a paper towel works better than a rag for blotting. So um, like I have a rag here, but if I was trying to blot off a bleed, it wouldn't work as well in a rag as a paper towel for whatever reason. Paper towels seem to just be more absorbent for watercolor. I think I probably ought to go in with a with a dryer because I do notice that I'm getting some feathered edges where the leaves meet. So my first leaves are not fully dry yet. So if you have any questions while I'm drying, go ahead and pop them in the chat. Caught up on questions, so we're good for the moment. Okay. And if your colors feel a little too intense, you can go ahead and blot them, and then you can really see how your um, your veining looks after you scrape it. You don't have to dry the entire background; just kind of get those uh, get those leaves you're going to be painting painting next to taken care of. I feel like the brush show looks kind of like confetti, like especially when you look in there; it's just kind of like. Somebody just do sprinkles on your painting. Something I had thought about doing, um, I thought about taking some gesso or gouache or something and, and going around these leaves and brightening all of that, but I decided not to do that last night. I decided to sleep on it. And then when I came back, I decided that it, they were bright enough, but that's something you could do if you wanted them to be a little more prominent and they felt a little too, um, like they didn't stand out enough for you. So that's another option. Wuzzy 450. I purchased a set of sable brushes online and they accidentally sent me a camel brush set. Should I return them right away or is this a blessing in disguise? Um, well, camel hair isn't really camel hair. It's, it can, it's, it can be used to refer any, refer to any sort of animal hair. So, um, I would contact them. Well, I mean, try the brushes. If you're happy with them, then then you know that's fine but if you try them and the hairs fall out and you're not happy with them then i would contact the seller and see if they sent you something by mistake chances are it was just they're just using their words interchangeably that's really common especially on like amazon not so much on an art supply website because they're going to be a lot more specific as to what they sell because they're going to be selling higher end and lower end and they will want people to know what they're paying for if something's more expensive they'll want them to know that's because it's real sable if it's something that's cheap they'll want them to know that they'll call it pony hair or camel hair or something like that it's just to um differentiate the products all right to go into this guy here this is going to be mostly yellow And it could be that people don't even know what they're selling. They're just kind of uh, like a sell, seller that sells a lot of things. Like if it's um, like on Amazon, you can get that a lot. A lot of uh, foreign sellers that are just, they'll put anything up in their shop without really knowing what the products are. 
and so you have to kind of know what you're what you're buying if you're not in an actual art supplier's shop if you're ordering it from like um, Jerry's Autorama or Blick or Cheap Joe's you can always call someone and they'll help you they're all their staff or artists all right I'm gonna grab a little bit of that opera I really love the opera on the um, on the yellow it mellows a little bit so don't freak out if it's a little too bright because it will tone down put a little of that Bordeaux in there just to brown it a little bit because the Bordeaux has enough purple undertones that when you add it to yellow it's going to neutralize it a bit but not turn it completely brown you'll still get those maroon undertones that are pretty I can put my stems in now because I've dried the backgrounds around these enough uh, Lou how to avoid blooming. I keep my paper evenly wet and work fast, but no matter what I do, I can't get washes without them showing up. Um, blooms come because you have puddles, so you probably have a little too much water. Um, or maybe you're rinsing your brush off and you're, you're dropping water droplets and you don't realize it. That's happened to me before. Um, and your, your paper can seem almost dry, but you go wash your brush and you bring your brush over and you drop a, um, a little drop of water and then a few minutes later you see that you've got this puddle and um, that's usually what happens if you've been able to keep your page dry the whole time and then you see these show up because a lot of times you just don't notice it uh, in time to blot it off and even if you do blot it off a lot of times you'll still lift up that pigment underneath so I would say keep your bra your water bucket maybe over to like if you're right hand keep it way over to the right so you can't accidentally drop it on like mine's like in front of me so I've I've dropped mine a lot um, on my painting um, so I bet that's what's happening if not just as you're doing your washes look for puddles like especially on the edges of your paper that seems to be where they collect or if you do get like a little buckle they'll collect in there just um, dry your brush off really well and just set it where you see that water and it will soak up the extra so that you'll keep that even tension on your paper so it won't bloom on you so I think it's probably one of those two situ one of those two situations And we're wetting this one and we're going to put in some permanent yellow if you want actually if you want to go grab some lemon yellow you could do that for this one because we want this one to be a little bit cooler and you might end up using a little bit of that too that disperse is nice uh, we might end up using some of that on top of that one later that's got a really nice dispersion sometimes with the cheaper paints they will add extra dispersant into it so that you get that whoosh of color um, like the Primo marketing ones are uh, really known for that. They've got that whoosh of color when you set it down to your paper. Um, because sometimes your student grade paints won't flow very well. So that's a way that manufacturers can get that quality without having to spend a lot of money on a lot of pigments. I picked up some peacock blue on that brush that already had the lemon on it. And I'm just adding that onto this side of the leaf. Give me a nice contrast with that corally edge that I have on the leaf next to it uh, Amanda would the clear masking tape trick that you did in a previous video work with this painting if you wanted to do the background first to protect the leaves oh sure absolutely uh, Raleigh R. Rock, do you think Sennelier, Sen, Sen, Sennelier, Sennelier, I'll never get it right. <laughs> it's a hard In one. two years and I still can't get it right. Uh, Sennelier watercolor paints are worth the price. Uh, well, it all depends on what you're paying for them. Um, I, they have a set that's, and I've seen it on pretty much all the big art supply sites it's 12 plus 6 free so you get 18 for the price of 12 and I think it like I paid around 60 dollars for that set it was 18 colors in a tin um and then like a, a long metal tin that would hold 24 and um yeah I thought that was a great deal um but you know if you're paying 
it totally depends. I don't know how much you're paying. Um, in the United States, we can get like the 21 milliliter tubes for between eight and $15. So I think that's a good deal. But if you're paying, you know, double or triple that, then, you know, probably not. Price compare maybe too. check out a couple of different sites and see what they're. Yeah, I've had their set of 48 in my kind of save for later list on Amazon for a couple of years. And I've seen it fluctuate from like $150 all the way up to like almost $300. So, you know, you just have to kind of know what you're willing to spend and then to keep an eye out for sales, I think. I really like the paints. I really like them for painting um, out on location because it's really hard to overwork a painting with Sennelier. They just layer so well. Um, so I find that I don't, especially sometimes I enjoy painting something so much that I don't want to stop. And then I find that it's just really hard to overwork with those paints. They just keep keep on glowing as you layer. So I would say they're worth the money as long as, you know, you're you're getting them at a reasonable price. Uh, Joe Macy, Lindsay, what does Shinhan call this yellow out of curiosity? The lemon that I just used, they call that lemon. Um, and I just put my swatch away so I don't have the pigment information on that one. One of their yellows is a PY1 and it's so it's a little bit um, a little bit dodgy. That's a PY3 like a Hansa yellow light I believe it, and it does behave like a Hansa yellow light. So if you have that color to um, to suppl uh, supplement, substitute you can. So now we're going to do some brush show on the leaves themselves. So what I would recommend is wetting only wetting the area where you want to have some of that effect. Um, if you look at leaves and when they're turning, you'll often see like little specks of different colors and that's really what I'm going for here. I'm just going to be wetting some areas and uh, dropping in like some of the olive green and just kind of letting it burst out. So you just want to make sure you don't overdo it. That's the only advice I'd really give you for this. Um, and also if you have a wet leaf next to where you're working, just kind of paint the other side of that side of that leaf so you don't end up having... Um, having bleeding where you don't want it. I, you also, you don't need to wet the whole leaf. You can just wet a few patches and then drop in some colors. So with this, since I've got, it's kind of like red, orange, I got some like maroon, I can use some yellow. I can use um, the olive. Uh, the olive green is going to give me a really dark effect. So I'm just, maybe just do one little speck of that. You just gotta be really light because it's really hard to tell what you have until you add a little more water. So you can be patient and kind of see what's happening here. I'll bring it up closer to the camera. And I can just kind of dab a little water and help it um, activate a little bit. Uh, Amethyst Peony, does Lindsay use a board to stretch the paper? And does she have any suggestions on what I can use as I don't have access to discontinued tile sample boards, etc.? Um, you can go to any hardware store, uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot, any of those places, and you can buy like a two foot by four foot piece of, it's called Masonite or hardboard. It's an MDF, I think, MDF board. It's like about a quarter of an inch thick. It's brown and um, you can have them cut it down to whatever size you want. So if you knew you were going to use, um, you wanted uh, to have like four 16 by 20 boards, you want to have, I don't really no math like the math on top of my head what that would work out to with that size board but you know you could tell them you want one cut this size and two cut this size or whatever that will that'll work with what you want to paint and they'll cut it for you and that's great for for stretching I do recommend you wash it like with some dish soap get any grease or oils off of it and then you will be able to stretch your paper on there and it will work really well hey there it's hail is it easier to mix two paint rather than pan that it's the same. As long as you have a good quality paint, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use some red and some yellow on this one as well. And I don't think I'm going to put any of the um, turquoise in there because I think that would get too muddy. Uh, Phil Morgan, could I use salt with brusho? Sure. I would make sure you had a wet wash. I would do the water, then I'd do the brush -o. Um Maneuver it however you want with the brush. Manipulate it however you want. And then I would drop in the, um, I would drop in the salt and then leave it be. 
just adding a little bit more of that vermilion under this edge of the yellow leaf just to give it a little shadow and dimension. Well, we hit 411 watching. We wow, that's amazing. Today. That's fantastic. Since it is such a big space, I think I might just do a little tap of olive green in there. And that one, I think I'll just let it do its thing because then it'll look like a little dark spot. So I don't want it to get too muddy. And again, I am jumping like to each other one so that I don't have them flow into their neighbors. This one, I think I'll do a little of the uh, sea green on because I've got those pretty greens in there. Now, some people like to, um, they'll like fold a piece of paper in half and they will um, that's yellow. They will put the brush out on the folded paper and they'll use that folded paper to disperse it. I tried that, but for me, this works just as well. Ooh, and that's kind of just doing a nice thing on its own. I don't know if I really want to do too much to that, um, because it is kind of bursting out on its own. Uh, if you do want to manipulate it, go ahead. I'm just going to leave that for now. I can always go back to it. Uh, if I add more, more water and it's still there and it's crystals and it will, um, then it will burst some more. And speaking of burst, you can use Color Burst, which is a product by Ken Oliver. I don't know if he mixes the colors in his, um, I'm thinking he does, because I have, I have a few of his colors, and I think that some of them have mixtures of different pigments and some don't. So I think it just depends on the color you get. I like their applicator tube, that they come in better than the little pots of, um, the little pots of color that we have here. Oh, shoot, I can't tell what color I just used. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have a lot of color in this one. Uh, Jane Hart has Lindsay tried Jackson's art own brand watercolor paints. They are supposed to be very similar to Sen Sennelier paints. I haven't. Uh, the only time I've ordered anything but from Jackson's was actually through Amazon. It was half pans because they sell on Amazon as well. But I haven't. But I'm pretty sure um, if you... He's not very active on YouTube anymore, but uh, The Spin Doctor, he's on Instagram. And I think he's swatched out some of the Jacksons. I know he's used some. Um, so if you have a specific question, I would ask him because he would he's used them and he would know. Or kind of stalk his Instagram mm -hmm. account and see what he's what he's put up for swatches. Because I, I know he has those, or some of them anyway. And he's a good resource for pigment information and whatnot. And I'm sure if he's got the time, he would be happy to to answer a question or two. That was looking a little too dark to me, so I just want to kind of go and spread it out and pull some things along the, uh, the uh, veining. Okay, so any place you feel like you just want to maybe guide some of the color or maybe make a little bridge it's too harsh for you, you can just kind of um, I like to go along the veins and then just kind of pull water along the veins so that I end up just kind of um, enhancing that and it has a little structure to it so it's not just like random splotches of color. You can also put this, um, you could sprinkle this on your palette and you could add water to it and use it like a watercolor. So if like you just wanted a little bit of, of a certain color somewhere, like say, oh, I want a little bit of that rose red there, I can take the rose red and I can sprinkle it on my palette and then I can add some water to it and mix it up. And then I can add that onto my, oops, you can't even see that. <laughs> I sprinkled it on there and I add a little water to it. And then I can bring that over and, um, <clears throat> and use it on my painting. I don't think that's the best use of these because they're kind of expensive, I think, to use them like that. I think they're best used um, by sprinkling on and getting that effect because that's kind of what you're paying for. But it's definitely another versatile way you can use it because, you know, you might only have those products out on your table at a time. So rather than digging through and getting those other supplies and perhaps losing the chance where you would have used um, that technique, you can, you can just grab it and go and have another use for it. This was the olive green. Olive green has a lot of yellow in it. It's kind of earthy and pretty. <clears throat> I 
I kind of think I want to put a little red in that one too. I think that might look uh, might look pretty because they kind of neutralize each other. My big tip would be go easy because I tend to go get heavy handed with this and then you can have just a black hole because it's they're so strong. a little that's a little much there actually okay you don't have to do them on every uh, leaf if you don't want to that's completely up to you I think I will just put a little bit on these but not a ton I'll do a little Yellow is an easy one because that doesn't go that doesn't go too uh, crazy on you. Black's a tough one to use on the leaves because it is so strong. If you decide you want to use more black, like this is what the black looks like here in the background. It just kind of um, it's almost like a carnival of colors there. I think maybe just a little bit of the rose red on that yellow one on this one too. And maybe a little bit of the olive green. And if you're worried that you're you're too heavy-handed, if you use a smaller brush to manipulate the uh, the brush, oh, you won't end up doing as much uh, to affect it. Uh, no, no. My first branch into more expensive paints were koi watercolors. Is there another brand of pan watercolors you suggest? Um. I would like to know what's your budget because that would really that would um, that would affect what I recommended. Hopefully they get back with that because if not, they can always message you uh, in the messages true. after the video or um, ask for recommendations on the Facebook page mm -hmm. from you and other watercolor people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the koi is great, but there's definitely, it, the price fluctuates on that too. I noticed the price has gone up on the koi pans recently. And so I would definitely say there's better uh, buys now. Um, a few months ago, they had the 30 or 24 or 30 set, whatever the set I have is, um, like for like $12. So yeah, that was a great buy. But now it's like $30. So I'm like, well, you know, for $30, I think I would recommend maybe a couple of the Prima sets. <clears throat> because they're a little more transparent and I feel like the colors last a little bit longer. Uh, her budget is between $50 and $100. $50 and $100. I would say um, Schmincke or Sennelier. You can get a 12-pan set, especially the Schmincke, because you can get a 12-pan set of the Schmincke that has two uh, reds, yellows, and blues. That are, so you got the split primary plus some convenience colors. And I think that's running around $60 on Amazon. Um, and you can mix anything you want from that, and they're very slow wearing. Uh, either that or the Sennelier, they're both great, great buys, and they'll both run around $60 on Amazon. Um, and if you're in another country, you know, go with the one that's a better, that's a better buy. Not, not as many companies make the, make a, a pan set versus a, like the tube set, so. The, the, also those handmade watercolors I used a couple weeks ago, I still think they're out of stock until later this month, but um, they were from the seller A Little Creative um, on Etsy, and they're called Renaissance. They're a Polish watercolor, and those were, I think the, the 24 half pan set was around 50 or 60, so I mean that's another, another great option. Um, handmade watercolors are a little bit different. They don't seem to be as um as glossy or translucent like when you thin them out they do seem uh, heavy is the wrong word they just have a little bit more body to them i'd say so depending on what you're after they might be they might fit the bill too or you could get a smaller set of those if your budget's 100 you could get the, the set of 12 of the handmade ones and a you know set of 12 of um the schminka or the sennelier for about you know, 75 80 dollars so you'd still be well within your budget all right, now I'm going to get the, um, I'm going to paint the line that they're all hanging on, and I think I'm going to do that with a liner brush. Just got to find one here. Okay. 
And I'm sure other people probably would recommend stuff in the chat too if they're well, what their favorite is. Everyone's got a different favorite. Well, I'll use a dagger. That might work pretty well. That's where my liner went off to. So that's another good use for this dagger brush. It makes a really long stripe. So I'm going to mix up colors that I've already used. I think I'll do that Bordeaux. That's such a nice rich purple. And I'll add that peacock blue because that's a bluish green or a greenish blue rather. Add a little vermilion to that to brown it up a little bit more. There we go. We got a nice neutral black there out of colors we already used. Uh, Nasa Oberlin, would you please recommend a quality pan set? I have Dr. Paige Martin's Hydras and Cotman tubes and watercolor pencils, and she's not pleased, or he is not pleased with any of them, and they, I asked why, and they're not happy with the vibrancy. I would say, uh, go for Schminka. They're very vibrant, and they offer a pan set. M. Graham's also very vibrant, but they don't offer pans. Daniel Smith is going to be... Uh, offering pans soon if they haven't already that might be an option I have no idea what they're what they're going for but um, but that's another option I'm also gonna darken the tips of my stems with the same color using that dagger brush just the tip of it How do you plug the hole in the top of the brush -o pigment? I either stick a thumbtack in them or put a piece of scotch tape over the top. Usually scotch tape because I can never find thumbtack. Uh, Becca Hans, I have PH Martin Hydrus watercolor set one and there's no yellow ochre or burnt raw sienna umber. What can I use to mix instead? Oh, set one. Oh gosh, I'm trying to think what's in there. Um. I would start with your yellow. You could do a yellow and a purple, but it's not probably going to granulate very well. Um, if there's a brown in that set, maybe if you could do the brown and yellow, and then you might need a purple or a, a red in that to um, uh, to make the colors look right. Um, I guess I would go for that, but you can get the bottles individually. So you could get a bottle of yellow ochre and um, and add that to your set. That I think they're around $5.00. So they're not crazy expensive, and that would um, that would probably fit the bill pretty well for you. I kind of does anybody want to have more brush show effect in the background? Because I was thinking I might do a little bit more of like the black brush show in the background because I've got more like all those little speckles and stuff. I I had a little bit more in that one. If anybody wants that, let me know. I could just do some more spattering of colors. I think people are always up for spattering. Yeah. I'll sure do that now, and then I can just dry everything at once, because I'm going to go in with a black pen and uh, sharpen up some of our edges. Um, I feel like I wanted a little bit more orangey red, so I've got my vermilion. So just keep a rag handy to blot if you get your speckles where you don't want them. I've given up trying to keep my table white. I spray painted it white uh, earlier this summer, but... I just didn't stay white. Yeah, I just gave up. <laughs> like, yeah, that was a nice thought. Back to contact paper. It's too, too easier to, to, uh, <laughs> to redo when you need to. Do some of that peacock blue. That's so pretty. I love that color. If you want some big splashes, what I recommend is actually pre-going in and making some areas for the color to flow. And then when you when you spat, uh, spatter into it, the colors will just kind of naturally uh, look like they were they were splashed on. I do that a lot when I'm doing the animal portraits where we have like a crazy background. Or we have the soft edges, like we'll have a soft edge, like on the owl or the giraffe, and we and it just kind of flowed into a into a background. 
I think drafts are getting more popular, Sarah. I saw, I thought of you. I was at TJ Maxx yesterday. Oh, Jason I, sent me a picture. Oh, he did? He okay. A draft. I was like, Ooh, It was like in the nursery section. Yeah. I like the spatter. I think it's kind of fun when you're doing a loose project like this. And of course, if you don't like it, then don't do it. In your artwork, in your world, you can have spatter or no spatter. Completely up to you. You can have glitter, no glitter. That's right. Uh, Noir Ain, do you recommend you, us using the green in the palette or mixing our own? Um, I think it totally depends. A lot of times I start off with a single pigment green, like a, a phthalo green. And then I will add a little bit of orange to it or a little yellow or a little red and I will customize it that way because it's easier to make a color duller than it is to make it vibrant. So if you're if you start off with a yellow and a blue to make your green, you'll get a beautiful green, but everything you mix into that is just gonna make it duller. If you start off with a with like a verdian hue, regular verdian isn't that bright, but a verdian hue or phthalo green, you're gonna start off with a single pigment green that's super vibrant and then you can dull it down as much as you want. So you have a little bit more control that way and you can actually end up with less um, less colors in your mix. So it doesn't doesn't matter at all as long as you can mix as long as you can you have the colors you need to mix what you want to mix. Use them. I'm just blotting to speed up my drying. That's the only reason. It'll be a little less vibrant than if I just let it dry, but it'll be a little quicker for you guys. And I want to make sure this is nice and dry because when I brush water over to do the brush show, that final brush show, um, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to lift up all those speckles. I want there to be layers upon layers of those that speckly texture. I think I'll do my black pen before I do that because I don't want to have to. Sometimes when I use a, when I do a pen, I want to rest my hand uh, so that it, I'm not shaky and I don't want to have to try to hover over wet, uh, a wet background. This is the, um, I love this fountain pen. This is the Jane Davenport Incredible Pen and I use a waterproof fountain proof, uh, fountain pen safe ink in it. And um, I got mine like years ago that, well, I just recently got the pen, but I got the ink years ago at an independent art store that's no longer around, but I found it online um, on Amazon and it's like the most nondescript bottle. It's just called like fountain pen ink. It like doesn't even have a brand on it, but I found it and, uh, and it's like about $10, but I've had mine going for probably 10 years or more. So I'm trying to think when did Penobscot paint go out of business? Cause that's when I oh, bought it. It was, it was a while ago. Yeah. It was Penobscot paint and then it was a hardware store for a yeah. while. Yeah. I think I bought it right after they moved over to the hardware store mm. and then they were no more. Cause I bought a couple fountain pens with it. And I, I don't know what happened to those. But this is the one fountain pen I haven't managed to kill within its first, you know, six months in my care. So and it's not a very expensive pen. So you can pay a lot of money for a fountain pen. I think this one is like eight bucks. So this is going to give you those nice crisp edges on uh, like those nice serrated edges on the on the side of the leaf. Which sometimes they get lost, especially when you're doing a lot of um, a lot of loose techniques here. Things get mushed, details get lost or overlapped, and this is waterproof. But if you're doing it last, like I am here, it doesn't matter if you're using a regular like a black gel pen or something, because if you're not going to go over it with water, then it doesn't matter. But if you think you might go over it with water again or spatter over it, then I would highly recommend a waterproof ink. And if you can't find the fountain proof pen, the fountain pen ink, or you don't have a fountain pen, you can use any waterproof ink. You just don't want to put um, an ink with shellac in it in your fountain pen or you'll, uh, you'll ruin it. Don't worry if your lines don't line up exactly on your leaves. 
and just adds to the charm. Our leaves will be changing before we know it. <laughs> Someone mentioned the S word the other day while I was at the oh, no. shop. I was like, no, that is the S word. I'm not allowed to say that. That's the worst four letter word. <laughs> it is the worst four letter word. And I've said some four letter words in my time and that's the worst. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have a mild winter. We're due for one, I think. <sighs> yeah, but at the same time, I kind of hope we don't get a lot of snow at first, but it gets cold, so we kill off some of these ticks. Oh my gosh, yeah, those have been bad. Knock on wood, my cat has not dragged home any ticks. Well, they probably have that flea stuff, that flea and tick. Yeah, but they've still, years past, they've still, I've brushed them and brushed oh, them off. So. Yep. You can go over the uh, the line if you want to. I think mine's dark enough, so I'm not going to. And then if you like, I think this is a nice touch, but you don't have to do it. I'm going to use a little white paint pen to do some highlights on there. And it does make it look a little cartoony. So if you don't like that cartoony look, then, uh, then skip it. But I like it. So I like it for this piece. I don't always like it, but um, I think it's kind of, I just think it kind of helps make things crisp. Now, I for this instance, I think a gel pen might actually work a little bit better because I'm finding that my my pen wants to absorb into the layers underneath. So I'm going to grab a gel pen. That's the only thing with uh, that I've noticed. That's the only downside with the pasta pens is that sometimes it uh, it just doesn't want to want to stick that well. I've got a nice fresh brand new gel pen. Oh yeah, see now this is holding its own, but the Posca wanted to absorb. Usually if you just give it a little more time, it will, um, the, the temp, the uh, stuff on the bottom will seal up enough that you can go over it with a Posca pen. But I notice if there's a lot of dye in the paints, it does seem to want to, to grab it until it dries. Like if you're, if you're going over like uh, your real brush pens with a Posca pen it, or a Copic marker, if it's not completely dry, it will, it'll like mix in with what you have underneath. Uh, Mary shows if the ink dries up in the fountain pen nib, do you just dip it in water to get it flowing? I seem to make a mess when I use a fountain pen. Yeah, wipe it off with like a wet paper towel or um, what What I did actually, because I hadn't used this in probably a month, I opened it up and there's like a little lever on the on the cartridge because I have the reusable cartridge because I fill it up with my own ink. I just pushed that that lever down a little bit so it put it, it forced the ink. Um, I know I've done that before and it's never given me a problem. Um, but if it's really clogged, you can just rinse it out. I have a product by um, Dr. P.H. Martin, which is a, um, a pen cleaner. It's like the Bombay pen cleaner. And even though this isn't in India ink, it does, it does clean the pens pretty well. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary. I think it's like Windex, honestly. It smells like Windex, so it's probably what it is. Um, but just something, alcohol is good. That will break up your ink and clean it and dry really quickly. Because basically you don't want a bunch of water in there drying. Um, usually your fountain pen inks have a little bit of lubrication in them so that they don't rust your pens or corrode them at all. Um, but usually just wiping them with a wet cloth if you start, and then if you're going to use them right away, all that ink will kind of flood in and fill the, rinse out the water and you'll be good. Uh, Amethyst Peony, is there anyone or a resource Lindsay uses that inspires and gives new ideas and techniques her with watercolor, etc.? Hmm, um, let's see. Um... Well, I have a lot of friends on YouTube that, that do watercolor. Um, Steve from The Mind of Watercolor, Angela Fair. Um, you know, I know I, I don't want to start listing because then I'll forget somebody and I'll feel bad. Um, I love Jane Danforth. I, I, even though I don't do people very often, um, paint people, She her work just is so fun and whimsical and I love it. Uh, there's a food illustrator, um, Kendall... <laughs> Oh gosh, I, I see, I'm going to butcher people's names, but she is um, a very talented food illustrator, illustrator on YouTube. Um, gosh, there's a lot, but then again, I also don't watch many YouTube videos because I don't want to get too influenced and, um, you know, just, I don't want to copy other people. Um, I tend to look at old books a lot too, like the, um, the book everything you ever want to know about watercolor that's a good one to look at but uh, books with older um older artwork like from the 80s not the 80s isn't old but from the 80s like works by chris reed which is, does very loose and splashy figurative works 
uh, stuff like that. I just try to look, I'll, I'll look through the watercolor artist magazine. I get that one in the mail just for some inspiration. Um, I guess those would be, those are good places. You can always go on Pinterest too and search. Oh, on Instagram. I get a lot of inspiration on Instagram. There are so many painters that are all over the world that you don't need to speak their language, but you can look at the beautiful work. Um, there's a lot of Russian watercolorists that are really talented and I would butcher anybody's name if I tried <laughs> to say it, unfortunately. Um, a lot of uh, watercolors from Singapore and the Philippines. Um, yeah, there's so many. There's so many. I would just go on Instagram and search like hashtag watercolor or whatever type of watercolor art you like and you'll find so many different um, different artists to follow. So first thing, the next thing I want to try, we're almost done. Um, I want to try just sprinkling some on of the black without wetting it first and seeing if I can just spray it. Hopefully it won't just go everywhere. It won't just spray off my paper. There we go. That's kind of cool. I think that might be easier than just trying to re-wet the area. I'm going to do that with sea green and black. What if I put a little sea green in that? What happens? It seems to me when you sprinkle it on dry or damp and then you spray it, you get a much better effect. Where'd my black go? I think I need to make a, um, like a, a color code for the top. Just like spray some on, just make a swatch on some paper and stick it on the top. Now this is working pretty well. The thing is when you do this though, it's really hard to see where everything's gone. If your paper's damp, it grabs it a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I'm just kind of spraying it at an angle away from my leaves. And then I think I'll just take my brush and just pull the water out to the edge so I do have it a little bit darker on the outside. So it kind of is a little more seamless, gives me that vignette type of look. Uh, Tika Carr, can you make your own brush -o powder stuff? I tried grading ink tents and that didn't work very well. That was my, because uh, I did. Uh, when they first came out, I bought those three things and I tried to make my own, see if I could come up with something that was pretty close. And the closest thing was tie-dye, uh, the tie-dye stuff. Okay, get a little more spritzing here. To refill my water bottle. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Chow, Tiffany Cho, sorry about the last name pronunciation. Is there a way to save watercolor paint if it's separating from the binder? Yes, yeah, squeeze it all out. Like if it's in a tube and it's separating, squeeze it all into a like a little pan or a cup or something and mix it up and then let it dry out in your palette and it will be fine. Right, I think that this is done. One more spritz there because it looks like I have some unactivated stuff, but um, it's really easy to go overboard. I'm just going to dry this real quick so you can kind of get a good idea of how it's going to look, how it's going to look all dried. Actually, I can blot it pretty well because it does lock in the paper really quickly. And uh, do we have any other questions on brush -o? I think we're caught up. All right. Let's get this dry so you can get a good get a good look at it. Well, actually, I have the dry one over there. Why don't I just grab that one since we're all done here? Um, so here's the one that's dry on. It's funny. I don't even know what this paper was, <laughs> but I had a scrap of it, so I used it. It's very thin. Um, and, you know, depending on how much you manipulate it, how much uh, water you use, you can have tiny little speckles like I have there, or you can have bigger uh, bursts of color that kind of looks like, you know, lights or confetti or fireworks. Uh, it's just it's just open to experimentation. You've got to play with it and figure out what works best for you and to get the effect that you want. Um, it's really easy to go overboard with it because they're so strong. And my table, I'll show you, like, let me just spray my table with some water because, I mean, I'm going to have, so, you won't even see the pigment so much. And then you go to wipe it up and you're going to have, like, 
you, you'll be surprised at how much is on your table when you're done because it just kind of floats and goes everywhere. I've never heard anyone like suggest using a mask with it, but I suppose if you um, have asthma or something, you might want to use a uh, just a little dust mask with it. Uh, it doesn't seem to float too much because you're just kind of tapping it down, but I would keep that in mind if you have asthma or anything like that. Um, we're good on questions? We're all caught up. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And if you know any friends that would be interested in learning more about brush brushos, send them to this video and they can learn too. Um, one other thing I did on this that I really don't think that one needs, um, I used some neon colored pencils to brighten up some of the areas. Uh, I just used a green, red, and yellow, but I think these are plenty bright. It could just be because this was cheaper paper that I don't know even what it is. Um, so if you do have the issue where things aren't standing out and you want a little uh, more contrast, go in with some neon pencils. They're very transparent. You'll, you'll hardly even see that you used pencil, but it will brighten up some of those areas. Um, all right, I wanna thank you all for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.